Thanks to Global Ordnance for sponsoring this video. This is literally one of the guns I was most excited to get my hands on after SHOT Show last year. And I gotta tell you, it was worth the wait and it is worth the performance, worth the money. We're gonna take a deep dive right after this. Yeah, I dig that. That's soft, man. That's... Yeah. Wow. Well, good. Wow. Honest reactions. Uh, that is about as flat as my XC. It's a, it, it has a little more punch because no comp, but flat and tracking wise, it's a it's a really really close uh, feeling to the XC. We all shot it and we all agreed the damn thing shoots flat. Like it is a smooth shooting gun for a five inch gun. Now granted the weight and everything else all helps. I'm not disputing like adding a flashlight could help us. I, I get all that. But had, as I had it configured, which is how I have most of mine configured, this thing shot really, really flat. As far as accuracy goes, um, I didn't have any issues shooting high 90s on B8s at 25 as long as I was doing my part. And I'm not the world's best B8 25 yard shooter, but I was able to hold my own and do some uh, very, very high 90s, no problem whatsoever with the gun. So accuracy, it shot really well. Barrel lockup, it feels good. And recoil impulse, tuning of the gun, like overall, I, I'm just surprised these guns have not blown up yet because I really feel like it's just a matter of time before in the double stack market, Voodoo is going to be the gun to really check out. And I know that they're working on other stuff to expand the line, but right now their first offering with the Priest really, really hit it out of the park in my opinion. And I, I know I'm probably sounding a little bit like a Voodoo fanboy here, but as I've said in other videos, I'm not a particular brand fanboy. I'm a fanboy of good quality, reliable, hard use stuff. And this gun just flat out runs. They also have a championship under their belt already. Max Leo Grandis won limited optics shooting a priest as well. So not too shabby for a rookie year debut of a gun like this to have uh, kind of the, a, a championship belt around its waist already. Man, it, as soon as you even pick this gun up, you are just greeted with an immediate prestige of quality. And it's kind of hard to explain, but when you pick up something nice, whether it's a, you know, a good quality tool or a watch or a firearm in this case or whatever, and you immediately pick up something of high caliber quality, oh, that was kind of a pun, but you know what I mean? If you pick up something super nice and it just immediately has that prestige feeling of really high quality craftsmanship, uh, that's what I get with this gun. And I tell people, because I've had it for a while, I tell people that this truly does pack above its price point. And we'll get into pricing availability, we'll get into some specs, we'll get into a little bit of what's going on under the hood. Uh, but I wanna preface with, if you're on the fence about buying a double stack 1911 pistol from a company that's new to that you know, style, line of products, uh, grab a cup of coffee, pause the video, and then let's talk about it because I hope to answer those questions and give you, you know, the information you need, whether you want, you want to pick something like this up. So my name is Dave. I appreciate you guys spending a few minutes of your day checking out this video. Uh, disclosure, this is a demo from Voodoo Gunworks. I've known the guys at Voodoo for quite some time. I've done reviews on their precision rimfire rifles, as well as a first look video on their, uh, single stack 1911. And when we were talking after that, I kind of explained to them what my dream wish list would be for a double stack. And then we had some conversations and at SHOT Show 23, it was announced the Voodoo Priest would be its own, you know, official debut. And I was like, I want one right away. And I had to wait, I don't know, I want to say until spring, late spring, something like that. So I've been shooting it all summer. I've probably got about four to 5,000 rounds through it. But this, uh, as far as like payment or anything like that they're not paying me and this like i said is a is a media demo we'll kind of get into some of the details things like that um, as far as pricing and availability there are 
dealers that are carrying them now. Otherwise, you can order direct from Voodoo and you can kind of customize it a little bit. Uh, obviously, I have my favorite dealer of Rainier and, you know, Rainier tries to stock a few of the popular configurations as well. Now, as far as different configurations and things you can get, you can pretty much have it your way. They have some different uh, options as far as the finish. They have some different options with the grip, uh, and then they have different options with the dust cover, which obviously, you know, I have the short dust cover here, uh, but they do have a full length dust cover as well. So I've been shooting it the majority of the time with the light, just because that's what the holster I have. But, you know, just to kind of give you guys a close up of what the short dust cover looks like with the tactical model, is it does basically have the single Picatinny lug there, so you can attach the light of your choice. The full dust cover version uh, just extends that out, which I think is kind of a really cool look but you have a bunch of different options uh we're going to talk about the optic cut here in just a little bit speaking of pricing pricing is going to start right at around 32 3300 dollars depending on which options you get and you do have a bunch of options available you can pick like i said the frame with the dust cover you have to have some grip options you have optic cut options they have uh you know barrel options ambi safety options we'll kind of go into all that here in just a second what i have on this particular sample and what i would kind of look for on my own build now, I know that price might scare off some people, but if you look at the custom 2011, 1911 double stack market, it's easy to spend four, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 on a high-end pistol. And I gotta tell you, I've played with a lot of those and owned some of those custom guns that are on the market. And this thing for, as I have mine tricked out, it's probably in the mid-3,000 uh, mid package. I gotta say, this thing packs above its price point, and it's closer to those $5,000 guns than it is some of the other guns around like the $25,000 to $3,000 price point. Like, this thing literally feels like a custom gun, even though it's a production gun or a semi custom production gun. And, you know, because they do have some of those options available. But for me, on my sample here, this thing just absolutely is really, really nice. I had a gunsmith that works for another company kind of give it the once over and look and he I think he was interested in seeing under the hood as well and he told me that fit and finish and how everything locks up is done really really well so uh, we'll talk, talk about like I said talk about what's going on under the hood because there's some cool stuff going on under there but just to give you an idea of what I really like about it so let's talk about the grip first it is a hybrid grip. Now, mine is an aluminum grip. They're having their grips made by Chili, which is great. But what I really love about it is the hybrid texture. So we have the aggressive texture on the front. We have a smoother texture, a tread pattern on the sides, and then we loop back around to that aggressive texture on the back. So as you actually engage with that grip, you get the aggressive texture locking it into the back of your hand, you're getting the good front texture locking it in on the uh, front, and then where your hands meet, you still get some, but at the same time, if you were carrying it against your body, uh, you know, get a duty holster, an outside the waistband, inside the waistband, whatever, you have a little bit more gentle texture on the side. And ergonomically, with the pinned grip safety and the magwell, the grip just feels really good. Chili makes good grips. They know what they're doing. They partnered with somebody really nice. The slide to frame fit is just great. Now, my sample here fits really good uh, as far as just that that smoothness like you are again you're greeted with custom gunsmith quality every time you rack it or anytime i give this gun to somebody they are always very impressed especially when they compare it to some of the other guns on the market do have a red dirt trigger which mine breaks really nice good reset just a little bit of take up as i like on a 1911 trigger and then i have a nice break everything about the fire control is very, very nice on this gun. Mine breaks right around two and three quarter pound on average when I put it on the gauge, which is absolutely, oh, it's just so nice. They did such a nice job with that. Uh, other fire controls, we do have EGW components, so there's no mimmed parts, it's all machined. Let's talk about the ambi safety here. As you can see, it does have an ambi thumb safety, and I added a wider one on the left side of the gun, which is what I manipulate it with. However, it does come with the standard and you can specify this when you order it if you wanted a wider one or not but this one here it does have a cutout for the plunger tube and then it basically is the same width as the right side uh, now i wanted that a little bit wider so they sent it out to me it was easy i had no issues dropping it in in fact there was no fitting required whatsoever the parts just fit so that was awesome it just kind of speaks to the tolerances that they're holding with this that it was a drop-in part which isn't always the case in the double stack world or 1911 world 
But safety is good. It's a good quality component. They're nice and thick. Now they do have an option for blending. I did have a couple of people ask me about that and they do offer that as an additional service. Mine is not. I don't really have any complaints about it, but if you were ordering it, that certainly is an option to have this edge right here blended a little bit more. So it's just a little bit more smooth and buttery. If that's your thing, that's cool. Cause not gonna lie, I'd probably do that on one that I ordered too. Other quick things to talk about while we are talking about the grip and frame is it does have a very nice, generous magwell, and it does have cutouts here in case you were to have to extract a magazine. But uh, I had no issues with the MBX mags that it included or with staccato mags. Um, so in, what's nice is that with like these Checkmate magazines, it interfaces nicely. So if you had to extract it, it works just fine. And it does have an extended magazine release. Speaking of magazines, it does come with two MBX mags in a very nice case. Where did that case go? I'm not a big case guy. Like I would rather it just come in a Ziploc bag and save you and me and everybody else some money. But it does come in a very nice uh, savior made case. And they even put a little patch to kind of match the, the angles of the Velcro, which I thought was cool. But has your standard owner's manual, spot for your magazines, spot for the pistol, all that stuff. So that's cool. As far as serrations go, we have serrations in the front that match the serrations in the rear. And they are like what I like to call a one-way serration, where if I go this way, I don't really get much. But if I come this way, then that's where you can actually engage with that traction. They could be a little bit more aggressive, um, you know, but I had no complaints, no problem manipulating the gun whatsoever. So I don't really have anything to complain about either there. Now, as far as when it comes to feeding the Voodoo Priest, all of the ammunition that I fed through it was provided by the sponsor, Global Ordnance. And I literally could not thank them enough, and I could not do content like this without their support. So one of the things I wanted to pass on to you guys is if you use code GTAMMO, you get free shipping on all orders over 200. Whether you buy it by the case or buy it by the box, as long as it's over 200, you're going to get free shipping, which is awesome, especially when you start to stack these big, heavy cases. Now, they carry the brands that you know and love, but they also carry imported high quality stuff at a good value. And I even shoot the steel cased Sterling and this stuff has been way, way better than I thought. I mean, seriously, who would have thought steel cased ammunition, but this stuff looks really good. I get all of it from Global Ordnance and you can too. They'll take great care of you. Use the code shown on the screen or in the description and they will take care of free shipping for you over 200. Again, huge thanks to Global Ordnance. Now let's talk about the optic cut. And I'm a little biased on this because I, I feel like I had a little bit of input. Uh, when we were talking about optic cuts on the 1911 Mobius, and I said, you know, my dream optic cut would basically be a pedestal flare that would come up and support the RMR footprint from the bottom. So that way I don't have to worry about a ceiling plate on RMR optics. And then it basically aesthetically looks good to support SRO or non, you know, RMR bottom loading battery compartment footprints. So basically all the other RMR footprint stuff. And it would basically just blend really, really nicely and kind of have almost a, uh, a pedestal mushroom type appearance. And we kind of, you know, exchanged some ideas back and forth. And then when they kind of showed me what they were coming up with, I was just like, that is it. You nailed, nailed it. Like this, in my opinion, is the best optic cut I I have ever seen. So you might be thinking to myself, yourself, uh, well, Dave, since it's so far back, there's no rear sight. Well, what they did is they actually manufactured this little insert sight that goes onto the top of RMR, RMIHD, SROs, and then it's secured with the screws. So that way you do have a set of very, very low profile backup sights, which work out great. They're nice and low profile out of the way, and they easily engage with this nice tall front blade, which I think I could actually go a little bit shorter on mine based on my, my zero of my iron sights but it works just fine to be very effective if I were to have a dot failure. But uh, the sights are, are really low and tucked out of the way, which is exactly how I want them. And then overall, it supports the SRO really nice. It's a nice low cut SRO. We have just a few thou clearance. It does also fit RMR HD. I did test this with the RMR HD. I did change their optic cut to make sure it works with the RMR HD because that overhang is a little bit lower. But what's nice with the SRO sitting really you know, further back and with the HD is that the overhang of the optic uh, doesn't overhang very much of the ejection port really at all. It's almost flush with uh, the ejection port. The slide and frame on mine are a tungsten finish, but as you can see, the wear components are all nitride. So let's take it down. This thing is dirty and you guys can get an idea what's going on under the hood. Here's that bull barrel I was telling you about. And here's what's cool about this bull barrel is 
it is dirty, so I apologize for that. You can see the feed ramp and everything else. Definitely needs some clean in here quick. Okay, underneath all that crud, you can see that it is a polished feed ramp and it is a uh, Clark Para, and actually even a Lisner style barrel. It does have the radius cut here. Right there, it does have a, a radius, which I know is a little tough to see on camera. Now, what I want you to look at is that this radius surface here actually matches this radius here. So when the barrel um, it comes together, you know, like so, and you recognize that noise from when you cycle it, you can kind of hear that, that ting. It is really fit nicely. Now, a lot of uh, gun companies will use you know, standard Wilson, and it's just a flat surface here, but because we have this radius and that radius, some gunsmiths argue that that is the better way to, you know, fit your barrels to the, the platform. Now, what's also really good is as I was testing just general the fit and finish of the gun overall, uh, even when we test the link and we put some tension on the link, you know, we don't have any friction or tension here. You know, it everything is fit really, really nicely. Wow, that is dirty. A lot of crud. That's good though. It's good, uh, you know. Shows you that I actually shoot my guns, right? You guys want to see guns that have gotten shot, not just, you know, one trick little pony, like go to the range for 10 minutes and do a review, right? All right, now that I've got some the major crud out there, let's take a closer look on the inside of the slide. And you can see, again, just a little bit of, of wear. Uh, but no gouging, no burrs, no tearing or anything like that. So everything looks pretty good. Basically just nice and, and f worn together. Um, when the barrel is locked up, yeah, I can't move it. I don't have any play. The fit of the barrel to the slide is just as nice. So really uh, a nice high-end gun. Uh, and it should be for the money, you know, but when you are looking at the double stack 1911 market, it's not always as easy to get that. On the very front of the stripper rail, you can see that there is a very, very slight radius. And that just, again, adds in that smoothness of going over the disconnector. Uh, but it's, you know, I have no issues with feeding or anything like that. So some people say like, oh, you can't, you know, take anything. But I think if you put a slight radius there, and I've seen some custom gunsmiths do that, uh, you get the gun really running nice and smooth. And that's what they did here. No machine marks. I mean, I, I've taken a close look at this thing when I first got it, and I didn't have any concerns. And it's all, like I said, machined, no MIM parts whatsoever. But I, overall, I'm just super impressed with what they're doing, especially for the money. This is just really nice. So wrapping up, would I buy this gun? Absolutely. Is it worth the money? Yes. Do I think it packs above its price point? I really do. And I, everybody I let shoot it is very impressed. And I've let people shoot it who are new to the platform and they're like, dang, that's pretty solid. I let people who are very experienced shoot it and they're like, wow, that's my deal on the Voodoo Priest. I absolutely love this pistol. It has been a joy to shoot and every time I get the opportunity to have you know taken it to the range it has just been a really really enjoyable experience so hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did please like share and subscribe and if you want to support the channel you can do so on our patreon page and if you have any questions about this or anything else firearms related go ahead and sound off either in the comment section or you can send an email to the email address shown on the screen and at the end of the month we have a live QA show where I answer your questions thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day <laughs>